The McElroy brothers are not experts. And their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert. But if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? One, two, three. It's the side. It feels like life. Ah, it's better, it's better with you. My life. Ah, it's better, it's better with you. This is true. Ah, it's better, it's better with two. My life. Ah, it's better with you. Hello. Everybody and welcome to My Brother, My Brother, and Me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. And I'm secret agent Damien Ice. Dame, I'm secret agent Damien Ice. Blade. It's Griffin's first time wearing a tuxedo. <laughs> who? Who the fuck is Griffin? I'm Damien Iceblade, secret agent, government agent for the spy one. Oh, wait. Iceblade of the Nantucket Iceblades? Yes. I heard you were fired in disgrace for playing by your own rules. But they needed me when the terrorists did a, did the, did a disease. Good luck picking something that isn't happening in the <laughs> real world now. It's a, it's a small, it's a narrow window, small sliver. And who knows when this will air? Yeah, right. By the time this episode goes out, they knew about the Jello disaster. (laughs) How could they joke about it? Bring them in. (laughs) Bring them in. (laughs) They knew too much already. I hate this. You hate what? You hate being fancy and dressed up? I miss my tuxedo t shirt for so many reasons. The first of which being that it breathes (laughs) quite a bit better than my current attire. Okay. okay, but hey, but the you're look. the one who, after Fox was like, I'm sick of being the so not sloppy, yeah, the sloppy I one. I want to be the not sloppy boy. You Everyone knows that? me as the sloppy one. Of no, 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 yeah, no, it seemed like a great idea at the time. Okay. Hey, do you all want to hear, as long as you're here, do you want to hear a story? Is this about how the elephant got its tail? <laughs> no. Griffin, are you going to leave the sunglasses on for the Probably, whole Probably, yeah. Although, this is fucked up. I can see my own eyeballs because of the lights. I'm going to spend this entire show delivering all my incredible jokes to myself, point blank. (laughs) Now, Griffin, you mean you can see the reflection of your own eyeballs, right? I don't even know anymore. It might be (laughs) Damien. I think he wants out. My, um... Did you you make a deal with Khonshu? Because this could be a problem. I want to hear Justin's incredible story. You all know know my grandpa, Dan? (laughs) (laughs) He's, um, he's, he's Sydney's grandfather on her dad's side. Grandpa Dan? He went to Auburn? Okay. He's a, southern, he's a southern fellow, and he kind of talks like this when I do an impression of him. <laughs> and, um, it's more the essence of Grandpa Dan. It was, uh, it, the story starts off sad. He, um, he had a fall, and he's so old and, that he couldn't get up from it. And so, Why are you laughing at that? That's so mean. We're not to the funny Still part Still laughing. Yet, you monsters. 
So he fell over and he fell and he couldn't get up. What's funny about that? He fell and he couldn't get up or get to the phone or call anybody. And eventually we went over and he bit and we had to take him to the hospital. And we thought pretty funny, huh? Yeah. Pretty funny stuff. Chuckle busters. Keep it going. Let me get past this part. Okay. Yeah. No, please, Justin. You're happy. No, Justin. They're relishing it. They are loving this. They're going to have to go to the hospital now to have their sides stitched up. He thought he thought he was going to die. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's old. But All he's, right. he's not. He didn't. Which is. <laughs> which is not the story, but it is important to know that Grandpa Dan has been a reserved man his whole life. And he's never done a lot of stuff that you've done. <laughs> like, for instance, go to Taco Bell. So my 88-year-old Grandpa Dan this week went to Taco Bell for the first time in his life. Now, is this, it, are we calling this like a backdoor munch squad light? No, it's not. It's, okay. I mean, it is important to remember that brand eating affects all of us in different right, ways. Right, sure, yeah. So Grandpa Dan goes to Taco Bell. That's my favorite children's book, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Grandpa Dan goes to Taco Bell and... Um, as he related the story, he said, well, I looked at the menu and I just, I had no idea what to order. It's overwhelming. So I got a taco. <laughs> <laughs> he got... <laughs> it, could, it could be, it could be worse. He could have ordered a bell. <laughs> he got a taco with beef and lettuce. <laughs> and, um... He, he said he was not impressed. <laughs> now, you've really tied Taco Bell's hands behind its not, back. Yeah, not only that, but I love that no one had told Dan up to that point, if your expectation is to be impressed. Well, no, you're not going to be impressed with a crunchy hard shell taco and beef and lettuce. No one no. would be. So Tommy got on his case. That's Sydney's dad said, oh, you should have let me take you because Tommy's got a whole thing, right? He's banging out a, a customized crunch wrap with beans and nacho cheese on there and like a quesarito and stuff like that. And I was, I was telling Sydney, he can't do that. No. You, know? you can't jump 40 years of Taco Bell evolution. <laughs> There's got to be a middle ground. There. You're, you're, gotta... hand, you're handing a caveman a Swiffer wet jet at that yeah. point. Yeah. He's, he, has, he can't contextualize. What are floors? You know, like he can't contextualize a Swiffer wet jet in much the same way, way that if you hand that man a naked chicken chalupa. No way. He's down on the ground again. He's back down on the, the ground again. But um, we are going to make a return trip to Taco Bell with Grandpa Dan. My plan is just to get him one thing from each decade so we can ease him into the naked chicken chalupa quesarito supreme. But can you imagine sitting down and doing like the munch squad about the giant cheese at Tostada to Grandpa Dan? Oh my where God. he's like, wait, did I die and wake up in an alternate universe? Is that what's happening here? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I just, the lack of cheese on there is really fucking with me. Yeah, honestly. right? It is. He didn't want to go that far outside of his comfort zone. Anyway, cheese? I don't know. I don't know. So this is an advice show. Uh, if Grandpa Dan had asked for my advice about Taco Bell, I'm sure I would have been very helpful to him, but I was not consulted. Did he not do Cinnamon Twist? Because that's like the best thing at Taco Bell. Don't. They still got that, right? Yeah. Uh, he did not get Cinnamon Twist. No, he got, he got um, a crunchy taco. I am... And he went crunchy, too. I'm busting up over here. I'm trying to move on to the advice portion. And Travis, it's just I never talk to Justin, and I want to know what's going yeah. on. Yeah, it, it is nice to catch up at these live, live events. Um, I'm also waiting for Justin's iPad to link to his phone so yeah, he can get Wi-Fi. You guys vamp for a second. I was trying to. I can uh, read the first question here, if you'd like. I would love I that, actually. Thank loaded you. it up backstage where the Wi-Fi is so nice. Swimming in it. You can feel it in the air in the green room. Oh, now I got it. Will I have... <laughs> this is a brief one. Will I have time to go to Olive Garden after your show today? Uh, and that's from a uh, something in Salt Lake. Are you here? Are you... Wow. Wait, no, this is, imp- this is a very important one. 
are you here? Yeah. I think I heard a yeah. Okay. okay. I, I, it's possible that they didn't come because <laughs> their <laughs> priorities are... They Googled it and they're like, I'm not making it to Olive Garden if I go to that show. Now, I, I, okay, so I pulled the questions and, and I realized something now that I didn't realize then. And as I can assume what you meant, but I realize now that you just wrote, like, can you go to Olive Garden after the show? Yeah. Yeah. You can go to Olive Garden anytime. Sure. I don't know that you'll be able to go in and dine there. It might be closed, but if you just want to see it after the show... <laughs> but let me, Travis, if you came to my house, they close at 10 p.m., by the way, so that would yeah, you be... Yeah, time. We're uh, going to get you out of here. Yeah. We got a timer going right there. We're going to go rain pace everyone and, and get you out of here. It is. In time to hit the OG. At most, how far a drive? 3.9 miles away. <laughs> okay, we're going to do three encores, though. Is there a, that time. It's, an, it's an hour and 45 minute walk, so if you're walking, you're you not... You're boned, dude. 13 minutes There's scooters drive. outside, though. Justin took a scooter here. Oh. So. Yeah, I guess I did. Thanks, Trev. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the tuxedo, because that would have been too much. Says the guy wearing a tiara. Uh, when, if, I, when I got it on the app, by the way, I don't do this at home. We don't have scooters, so I was very swept up in the novelty. and It was hot, and I went for it. Um, it says on the app, make sure you don't ride on sidewalks. Make sure you stay in the street. Uh, do you want me to fucking die? <laughs> do you know how many? Do you know that's where cars is? Because they are. That's cars, where cars is. I'm sorry, app. Cars is big scooters. Yes. Yeah. Um, cars. You know how there's two little wheels on a little scooter and no engine but my leg. Imagine if you will. <laughs> no one's impressed. If I le- if I leave the sidewalk, I lose my competitive advantage. Yeah. <laughs> No one's impressed by a tiny, shitty car in the street, <laughs> but if I zoom someone past, uh, past... Thank you, Paul. So here's what we're looking at. So here's what we're looking at. We got a diagram of the drive. Here's what I cannot imagine happening in a scooter on a street scenario. How, how long a drive are we talking there? 15. 15 minutes. Okay, we could get you there one minute before it closes. They ain't kicking you out after that. No. Because if, if Travis came to my house right before bedtime, I was like, can I have some spaghetti, please? Of course I would do it because he is my family. Now, it might be begrudging and it might be begrudging there as well. I might say, Griffin, I know it's 9.59, it's late. but I need some pasta. I'm carving up for a big race tomorrow like I do. Yeah. And Griffin would be like, again? again? And I get and that. Then, I get that. And then I would say, you got to try this new shit. It's like spaghetti, but not wet. And it has this crunch to it that'll... I wouldn't fall for it. Drive you wild. I'm a grown man with a pocket square. I would like to see a car wave a scooter in. Mm -hmm. Like, no, you go in front of me. Please, please. I'm happy to be behind you, person on a scooter. Why would they up the ante? They, you just gave me a direction in the app about how to go. And now you're like, you're ready for the big show. (laughs) And now with that, (laughs) at the end it says, be sure to always wear a helmet. Hey, fucko, if I had a helmet, I'd have a scooter. Yeah. Like, if I had planned for this, I certainly would have, like, I'd have the things I need. I don't have the things I need. Is there something on there that's like, and don't go on the highway? (laughs) Yes. And make sure you leave this here and get a car. Because you shouldn't be doing this. How about another question? I'd love that. Just give me one second. Did you close? Are you new? It's just that my battery's really low, so oh, I'm trying okay. to conserve it. If for the... only you had had a chance today. I had, I had to be ready for the 10 p.m. show right after this I get one. That, yeah. I'm trying to That's conserve. when we bring out the good stuff. All the jokes are the same, though. You're not missing anything. Don't worry about it. I oftentimes have a deep thirst for milk. And now, the question. No. I oftentimes have a deep thirst for milk. At home, this usually isn't a problem. Uh, but Wait, usually? They might be out of milk. Yeah. J- At home, this usually isn't a problem, but some bar and restaurant waitstaff are taken aback and unsure if they can help quench this desire. <laughs> the problem is that on more than one occasion, the server will come back triumphant or surprised and say that they, quote, found some. 
Should I be worried about this unexpected surprise milk? Would not downing the glass be a dishonor upon the hard work they did? That's from Leary Lactose in Las Vegas. Are you here? All right. All right. Thanks for making Says the drive. A strong, just calcium filled woo. So calcified that woo was. I also want to say maybe the reason they're taken aback is if you say something like, I have a deep passion for milk. Yeah, that's no good. I have an unslakable thirst for milk. If you can give me some of that beautiful moo juice, please. If this is not an issue if you only eat at Dave and Buster's. Because they got you. Dave and Buster's, a lot of milk there? I, they got milk. I had Dave and Buster's milk today. (laughs) It's very ethical. They let Dave and Buster watch Netflix and they hook them up to this apparatus. It's got bloody and vitamin D and B. (laughs) Yeah. They like to watch old boxing documentaries. As it withdraws. And they've actually scientifically determined there's more production during the actual fight. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, is, it is gray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't look directly at it. And you and don't, don't, drink, don't drink directly at it. No. I, no. And, and it costs 200 tickets. And don't drink Buster's before they mix it with Dave's. <laughs> you know, it's, you, know you got a say, base, bust an acid. <laughs> Buster before Dave, catch the wave. Dave before Buster, you're feeling flustered. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Dave and Buster. Don't drink that milk. Don't drink that milk. You have to know. You have to know. They worked so hard to bring you that. So? They worked hard. If you didn't want, you don't, you don't put the requirements of that on any other food item. That if they only there was some way, like maybe a monetary way that you could reward someone for their hard work at a restaurant that had nothing to do with you consuming 25 year old milk. Everything's all about money. If this, yeah. is, if this is the sort of person that throws cash around to fix problems, I don't think they're quite so hung up on what the person thinks of them for ordering milk. (laughs) Oh, sorry, Justin. You can't be conscientious and rich? No, I'm just saying. I would say pretty empirically, no. No, yeah. Yeah, I didn't think I'd be able to ride that one too far. Yeah. Um, Could you ask, could you drink some? Let me show you what drinking looks like. Could you drink some and say, I gotta be honest with you, this is the best milk I've ever had. Uh, And I need you to bring the container uh, so I can always buy this milk. And then you check the date surreptitiously. Is that our concern? The concern is the date. Yeah, you can check the date while you're having a conversation where you're like, oh, how interesting. Current events. John Bonet Ramsey is missing. (laughs) Oh, no. Is this, is this Star Wars The Phantom Menace? I love that flick. <laughs> this milk is, is this mil- Gungan milk? <laughs> this milk is a tie-in with Pirates of the Caribbean, The Ride. <laughs> <laughs> Unfathomable. Um, I mean, I know how it is. When you, I mean, you got to have your milk. I think you just got to take your chances. Worst case scenario. No! Worst case milk sc- is like the worst food to say, take your chances. Yeah, on I need to see it. From tea to bucket to... I want Louis Pasteur to be like, you're good. (laughs) You're good. You're good. I did this one myself, my man. I guess. I mean, I guess. No, it is the one food. If you say spoiled blank, the answer is... No one's ever like spoiled potato chips. It's always milk. Milk is the thing you're most worried about being bad. But expiration dates are made up by the government. Not not but to a point, Justin. Thank you. They're not real. If someone said, I've been saving this yogurt for a special occasion. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't act like that. Worst case scenario, you got some celebratory cheese. No big sure. deal. No, worst case scenario, you have some celebratory diarrhea. <laughs> sure. Okay. That too. Thank you. The neighbors we share a wall with seem to be starting a band. We've never really spoken to them, but we think they sound pretty good. 
and want to let them know we enjoy hearing them. What is the best way to say this to them without sounding creepy or passive-aggressive? That's from no- Nosy Noise Neighbors in Provo. Are you here? That was, How many hold on, of you wait, are there? Wait, hold on, wait. Shh, shh, shh. Are you here? Okay, thank you. This is a fast one. I have a slam dunk answer for you. Wow. Great, that's awesome, because I didn't want to get a hand on this ball. Yeah, this is about moving through these as quickly as possible. That's so we can get our point. friend Olive Garden... Change your Wi-Fi network name. Oh, yes. New band next door. Love it. I don't know that they can be that long. New band? Cool. <laughs> New, New band, band cool. cool. N-U-B-A-N-D. Cool. New band cool would be a good name for a band. <laughs> yeah. You could also do C. If you're worried about characters, C-U with an umlaut L. Yeah, cool. that would save you some, some serious... <laughs> That's the same exact number of characters, I feel like. Um, well, the umlaut's not separate. Oh, yes, fine, fine, fine. That would be cool, but I we'll don't think you can it. have an umlaut in the... Because the SSID, I think, would be... You'd have it. to have an umlaut in there. Just anyway. Go over to their phone and write it on the... <laughs> <laughs> Love your stuff, by the way. Hold on. <laughs> do, do, do you... Are you... Are you sure you want to be the only fan of this band? <laughs> Because they're in Skunk Works territory right now. They're just playing to try to figure out if it's anything. Yeah. And I feel like if you come in you, that early and you're just like, ba da ba ba ba, I'm loving it. <laughs> you are setting up a wild, yeah. unrealistic expectation for support. Like you could be, you could uh, be on a date in your apartment and just hear like, "Hey, what do you think about this?" Was that anything? You like that? Did that go too hard? Well, I was worried it went too hard. There's also the possibility that they're just like noodling and having fun. Yeah. And you're like, I love this new band. And they're like, I guess we it's need not, to. It's not ready yet. I guess we need to start a band now. Go it is on. a little presumptuous, right? Like, it's not being played for your <laughs> What if it's just a guy with weird sneezes? Yeah. <laughs> or a very, very lonely one-man band. You knock on the door like, I love your stuff. And he's like, psh, 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 thanks. I'm going to walk to the kitchen, sadly, now. That's my impression of what a one-man band sounds like. Thanks. I would, before I would make this leap, I would need to know what the music of every band in the world sounds like to make sure they're not playing a CD. Oh, my God. I would need to know with 100% certainty this is a new sound, new creation. (laughs) New band, because I do not want to open up the door and be like, dude, this is fucking sick. And they're like, it's Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. <laughs> it's John I, Philip Sousa. I, what are you it's John Philip about? Sousa. What, yeah, I guess it's good. How did you get a key? Can I borrow it? Can I borrow your John Philip Sousa seat? I don't think you need to be... I was streaming it. Can I borrow your computer? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you need to be a student of music to know when someone's laying it down like they're in the studio versus they're in their apartment trying to learn Master of Puppets because it, it was be, on Stranger but, Things. But you'd be, except Mountain Goats, you know? Yeah. You yeah. can't tell that, the difference that, between professional band Mountain Goats <laughs> and just nah. some dudes. <laughs> someone plays early Mountain Goats through their wall, you're not going to know if it's really someone playing guitar Finally. or not. But that's why we like it. I'm it's not complaining, wrong. I'm just saying... You love that scuffed shit. <laughs> Hear that, John Darnell? We love that scuffed shit. <laughs> Keep it coming, baby. You know he's writing books now. Like, leave some for the rest of us, John. Yeah, right, dude. <laughs> dude. <laughs> finally, someone's putting him in his place. Somebody's finally putting that stinker, John Darnell, in his place. Um, another question? Yeah, please. I'm about to start flight school to become a pilot. Yeah. While this is an exciting step in my career, I have a problem. I am terrified of heights. <laughs> I have a practice flight coming up, and I really don't want to spend it slumped down my seat, mortified and scrambling for a barf bag. Bad first impression. What are some ways I can overcome this fear and walk into this first flight cool as a cucumber, showing them I'm super chill about heights and flying around in them? That's from my stomach would rather be a train conductor. Are you here? From Mapleton. Are you here? That narrows it down. 
because they're a little bit embarrassed that they trying to be a pilot when they're afraid of heights. Yeah. I've and they didn't realize it until they heard a stranger say it out loud. But to be fair, I was thinking about it, right? We okay. all, well, uh, two of us have almost theater degrees. You almost have a theater degree. I have a theater degree. I, I, I have a theater degree. I thought you switched to journalism. No, uh, no, I have a minor in journalism, and I use neither. <laughs> <laughs> But Thank you. The thing is, I went to like, college for five years because I failed Spanish. I I was able to before going to college for a theater degree, act in stuff. You know what you don't get to do before going to flight school? <laughs> Fly a plane to but see you if you know, like it. They didn't discover the first time they went up in the big beautiful sky. Like, oh, I hate this. <laughs> I wish I hadn't picked this as my job forever. I have to assume you have a parent or overbearing grandfather who is a pilot who was like, this is the life for you. It's unfat. You have, you, it's, other than astronaut, you have picked the most up job that you could possibly have. Yeah. Maybe those people that do those fucking like, Red Bull halo jumps are a little bit higher than you. At least they're like, I'm headed down. I'm going down. Yeah, I'm going down. I want to fix this. Also, once they're in the plane, not out to them until you reach that point. Yeah. A pilot, you're just there the whole way. Just yeah, up, up, sure. up, 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 up. zone out as far as I know. I don't know why you would try to be, have such an up job. It's a very If you up don't job. like up. Yeah. But I will say this. In a plane, it's not really like not you're gonna fall. You're not gonna fall out of the plane. <laughs> In a perfect world. In a perfect sure. world. You're yes. Not- if you are, if you find yourself falling from a plane, there has been a bigger whoopsie doodle. That has happened. I mean, here's that, the thing. In that context, though. I do want the pilot to be afraid of not being up anymore. Like, yeah, I don't want, I don't want a pot that, he- that fear is healthy. Right. I want, I don't want a pilot who's like, I don't know, man, up, down. It's all the same to me. Yeah. I want you to have a healthy, Once healthy you man. Hey, what do you guys want? Let's show our hands. You guys want up or down? Up or down. It don't make any difference to yours truly. <laughs> I'm chill either way. Either way is fine. Who wants to see the stars? <laughs> I can go further up. I can go further, further down. down. You know what? I hate radio towers. <laughs> really. <laughs> because what? here's a, what's the number one piece of advice you give someone who's afraid of heights? What's that? Don't look down. Yeah. Right? That is also good advice for a pilot. Keep looking forward. Because if you spend the whole flight looking out the window, they have those, right? Yeah, yeah, they probably have a cool look name look in the wrong direction, yeah. you're going reverse solid, you're hitting the geese, you're going down. Yeah. You got to look in front for geese the whole time. But so, the problem is that Sully was looking in front of him, saw the geese, and was like, I'm going to get those motherfuckers. <laughs> you think you're so cool, geese? I'm a plain geese? Get out of my way. Oh, yeah? Okay. You bet I won't? Okay. <laughs> they don't talk about that enough in the movie. No, they don't. Tom Hanks is there and is like, I'm a perfect angel, when really that dude was like, I'm going to fuck these geese up. I lost at bar trivia last night. I'm fucking pissed. I'm not having in the movie. I'm gonna shred these geese. I need to watch Sully. Yeah, it's a sick film. You ever seen it? No, I'm so so sick. anyway, let me set it up. Can we be okay. serious now? <laughs> That's my impression of Tom Hanks and Sully. Yeah, honestly, Griffin, if I could say, it was really good. Can we be serious? Can, I can't do it a second time. But the first time, I think we can all agree, sounded a lot like Thomas Hanks. No arguments here. Is that a, is that a movie? Hey, sorry to interrupt. I just had to, it's, I got to read this verbatim. I'm sorry. It's like a, I'm sorry. I'll just read it verbatim. If your power is a dream, then make the dream take flight. You and Squarespace are gonna make it all right. Just a few clicks and key presses, all that you need. Whether you're making a good website 
or bad website. Hi, Justin McElroy here. Squarespace will let you make good websites. They make it easy to make good websites. Make tools that are uh, simple to use, even if you're not an expert, drag and drop. Beautiful, easy to make a great website. But what a lot of people won't tell you is that you are allowed to make a bad website with Squarespace. They will not step in and f forbid you. They don't make it easy because everything's so beautiful and they have such a great customer support and there's a, a Squarespace video studio that makes videos easy and you can sell uh, products with a, a physical or digital. Um, Squarespace has all those tools. So like they don't make it easy, but if you, to, to make a bad website, but if you wanna make a bad website, they're not gonna stop you. So fulfill your dream with Squarespace, whether your site is good or bad. Head on over to squarespace.com slash my brother, or you'll make me sad. There's a free trial when you're ready to launch. Use offer code my brother to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Squarespace. You can make a bad one if you want. Hey there, quick favor to ask. Will you help us out by taking a five-minute survey at MaximumFun.org slash survey? As you know, most of the support for MaxFun comes directly from folks like you, but many of our shows and our network also rely on limited advertising for some revenue. This survey helps us attract advertisers that are a good fit for the audiences of our shows, and it helps many of our hosts secure a bit of extra income. It should only take a few minutes to complete, and you'll get a discount at Max Fun Store when you do. That's MaximumFun.org slash survey. Thanks. I'm Lisa Hanawalt. And I'm Emily Heller. Nine years ago, we started a podcast to try and learn something new every episode. Things have gone a little off the rails since then. <laughs> Tune in to hear about low stakes neighborhood drama, gardening, the sordid, nasty underbelly of the horse girl lifestyle, hot sauce, <laughs> addiction to TV and sweaty takes on celebrity culture, and the weirdest, grossest stuff you can find on wikipedia.org. We'll read all of it no matter how gross. <laughs> There's something for everyone on our podcast, Baby Geniuses, hosted by us, two horny adult idiots. Hang out with us as we try and fail to retain any knowledge at all. Every other week on Maximum Fun. This can't be right. A Han and Dull watch? I'm trying to do a show. Did you all see that Vulture did a write-up about the white wine, about this new drink that I invented? The they, drink of the summer, you the mean? The drink of the summer, they call it. Um, this, not, it, look it up. <laughs> all right. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, I'm you already did that, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, today we're going to be uh, kind of zooming in, focusing in on one particular purveyor of haunted dolls, and that is uh, Haunted Honeys. <laughs> So this is really a haunted. I don't think watch. that's how you spell honeys. Yeah, it is. On I'm looking at eBay right now. I mean, now. that's haunted hoonies, though. <laughs> yeah, but it's haunted honeys. I'm looking at it. Uh, no, but I mean, it might be spelled okay, that Travis, way. But I get it. They okay, spelled it in a different okay, way. Pair, pair, let's let's welcome to the stage, Stella. All right. All right. Hold on. Wait a minute. Is that a promo code at the top? <laughs> Did that get cut off, or is it really fucking 5% off? What do you want? There's slim margins here, pal. Yes, so. This paranormal doll, 70s, neutral. Please read. Neutral? This doll was part of a paranormal study. You will receive the physical doll. I should hope so. Hey, stop that. This is Stella. She's in her 70s. Oh, she looks great. Yeah. Well, her vessel is 16 inches tall. Stella was not very happy with me getting her at first. What? Then why would she be happy when I purchase her on the eBay service? I think once she saw the other spirits here, she realized she'll be okay. Stella passed away in the late 1800s. She Wait, thought she's how old? She, well, she's dead but oh, how so, oh, wait, according to the Haunted Honey, she does not continue to age after that. Correct. So she, she's 70s. Forever. She's, yeah. 
She cool. thought many times that her life was going to end. Then all of a sudden, she would get better. <laughs> sure. I bet there was a lot of that in the 18... 18- I bet yeah, you know pretty what? much everybody in the 1800s had a moment where they were like, oh, I fell down once. This is it, I guess. They, they, I, you guys heard about all the diseases? Yeah, yeah, I fell down at work and now my arm is green. I guess this is it. So, nope, cool. So you've talked to Grandpa Dan already. You, yeah, if you knew right? the story, you should have just said something. I think, uh, okay, Stella had many near-death experiences uh, throughout she her life. She lives in a void of paper towels. <laughs> I, d- I don't think a near-death experience is when you think you're going to be fit and you're like, ah, never mind, I'm getting better. She was known to be a bit of a careless daredevil in her younger years. Okay. I can see that. Stella is neutral, but that doesn't mean she's not friendly. No. That neutral Roberta is very friendly. Yeah. She just got somewhat of a temperamental personality. She then like, that's not neutral. She likes things to go her way, lol. She enjoys... Wait, the, why? Because she... Well, doesn't everyone? No, why the lol after that Because she's like sassy, lol. But okay. we're talking about a ghost. Mm-hmm. She enjoys a spot in the living room next to the cute decorations. She enjoys judging my company, lol. She works great with any divination tools. She's not really picky over gifts. She likes everything from jewelry to flowers. When you get her, don't forget to give her a gift and light a white candle with some incense to welcome her. Um, I don't want to be pedantic, but jewelry to flowers is not a good scale of things. It's all the gifts that there are. Between jewelry and flowers. I'm sorry, everyone. This is a Boring ass doll. Well, Neutral. Well, maybe. I want something spicy. Maybe, our, maybe Jenga <laughs> will be more to your liking. Now, Jenga, I can get into. Welcome to yes, Jenga! Baby! Yes, baby! Branded as shit. $35 with 15% off using the code Haunted15. I do believe I will. Thank you very much. This doll was part of a paranormal study. You will receive the physical doll. Yes. This is Jenga. Yeah. Yeah, it is. His age is unknown, but his yeah, vessel is. is nine inches tall. Wink. Oh, a little guy. Wait, is there a wink in there? Nope. Jenga is in his mid-20s, except he is dead. <laughs> <laughs> He's a friendly little guy. He was sent to me from Canada. The lady that had him felt he may be negative. She sent me photos and videos of him, and I assured him he's positive, but she wanted him gone. Ah! Did they do your butt backwards, Jenga? Maybe his butt was knocked backwards when Jenga was hit walking along the side of the road. (laughs) He was hit so hard, his butt 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 was knocked. Switch sides with his privacy. We've all been there. That was my favorite Grey's Anatomy episode. I really we can save you, but your butt's always going to be on the front. It's okay. I still and love you. nothing but. I still love you. Dr. McPoop's weird. <laughs> I think it's going to be okay. I really believe that Jenga was a photographer. Does Jenga sit on the toilet like a cool teacher? <laughs> when I did his reading. Hey, we've had a lot of fun here today. <laughs> but you know what's but not fun? But how all poop? <laughs> When I did his reading, I got a vision of him walking beside the road with a camera in hand, presumably moments before he was tragically killed, I guess. (laughs) He's definitely got a very artistic side for a doll. (laughs) He gets along great with all others, and pets just adore him. I bet they do. He loves... This this sentence has never been written before. (laughs) He loves any type of art as an offering, and he also likes green candy. (laughs) My, oh, my two, pa- my two turn-ons? Easy. Fine art and green candy. <laughs> when you get in, don't forget to give a gift and light why, some incense to welcome I him. do love how his hair has a natural windswept look. Sure. Such a, festive do- such a festive doll. But let's take a moment, if we may, to meet uh, a new friend. Hold on. Wait for it. Wait. Hold on. Hi, Miguel. Shit. Oh, boy. Paul. Now, why is Miguel worth three dollars more? Do you think <laughs> this is Miguel? He is a teenager. <laughs> Griffin, can you though. just read uh, the like four descriptive terms there, uh, Paul? If you'd go back. Uh, paranormal doll, haunted honey's Miguel M45, teen, positive, very sweet, clingy. That sounds like 
a, a, like the description of a relationship. Like at first, he was a teen and really yeah. positive and so sweet, so sweet. But he but got then, a little clingy. A little clingy when college rolled around. This is Miguel. He's a teenager, and his vessel is nine inches tall. Yeah, it is. Finally, <laughs> finally, this little guy is ready to find his forever home. Every time I would ask him if he was ready, I would get a strong no. He's <laughs> Please don't sell me, Mama. Please, Mama. It's time, Miguel. No, no. So here, this is my forever home. You're ready to find your forever home. I found my forever I home. I need thirty-eight dollars for cigarettes. <laughs> so this is a challenge. Mama, Mama, may I have my turn on the chair? No. Yes, Miguel. <laughs> this is a challenging sentence. He has seen some of the updates from other spirits that got adopted in their new homes, and he's ready. I thought so he just we, said no. Yeah, but now he's finally ready. And this I was does, on the forums on Reddit. Yeah. That's great. Is your doll on the internet? Are you... <laughs> do you have Not the internet time? as we know it, Justin. Okay, it's sort of an ethereal bay. Yeah. All right. Um, he has seen some updates. He's ready. He's seen some shit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He had a tough time in the home I got him from, and that had him scared. What? Well, Miguel passed away in the 1950s. He was a very energetic teen and known to be a daredevil. And when he ate spicy food, he turned <laughs> into a car. <laughs> he, was, um, he was a very energetic teen and he was known to be a daredevil. He jumped out the window of the abandoned house down his street and ended up breaking his neck. And folks, I'm here to tell you that'll do it every time. <laughs> I love that version of It's a Wonderful Life where it's like, I'm going to buy that house and live in it when we get older and married. He's like, oh, yeah? Well, check this shit out. Ooh, crack. (laughs) Mary, you got to call someone, Mary. I'm actually going to go. I can't. I got some priors. Joseph, did that man just die? Yes, he did. Job's off. You're good, Clarence. We're clear on this. He went hardcore this time. One, two, three, and fuck it. So he jumped out the <laughs> He just a very such an energetic teen that he is a daredevil. Like a daredevil is one thing, right? We all know what that means. I yeah. don't think it means hey check this out. <laughs> I do think listen, you know that stupid not- abandoned house. <laughs> hey, you guys wanna see a dead body? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Wait again, not to be pedantic, I think a daredevil has to at least survive one thing. <laughs> sure. You gotta do one thing. Oh man. So he broke his neck. Look. Look. He was <laughs> There it is. He was so surprised. Yeah! yeah no, not, about <laughs> okay. not about that. Not about that. What? Well, I thought I could stick that shit. <laughs> he was he was surprised to see all the gifts and people who showed up to support and honor him at his funeral. Oh. Which, like, after the dumb shit he pulled, I get it, I guess. I, I, I would be surprised if people showed up for me, too. Miguel is very sweet. He will bond deeply with anyone who shows him kindness. He works great with any divination tools. He enjoys going through the home. Making, great at Adobe. Making little tipping and clacking noises. When you get him home, don't forget to give him a gift and light a white candle with some incense to God, welcome him. Light a okay. White and sure. I am only reading this in part that's at the end of all the posts because we're coming up on the end of the show here in a little bit. Follow Haunted Honeys on Instagram and TikTok. Thank you. Yes. Uh, but be, hey, listen, as somebody who's been by there, who ducked his head in a little bit earlier today, you better really be sure that you want to <laughs> check in on Haunted Honeys on TikTok. Okay. Uh. And don't leave weird comments because I'm tired of people selling dolls, putting notes in the boxes that are like, I checked out your podcast. It was really funny. And then they have my home address and I don't like that. (laughs) So please stop talking to the people who sell the dolls, everyone. Anyway, that's our Haunted Doll Watch. Thank you for that. Let's, Let's take it to the streets with some live audience questions. We have prepared a list of people we're going to call you down. Please do not approach the microphone. Oh, bye, Justin. Hello. Yeah, um, my name's Lori. I go by she, her. Hi, Lori. Hi, Lori. And my question is, I wrote a steamy alien romance book, and... Hell yeah. I need a title for it. (laughs) 
Can you give us, yeah, like a paragraph synopsis? Imagine sure. I'm reading the back and, and getting all worked. <laughs> what, what, what sort of the, you know, give me, what's the summation? Um, it's about this girl who gets kidnapped by aliens. Well, abducted, I guess is the right term. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That's the term they prefer. <laughs> yeah. But you're the writer, of course. Any sure. word choice that you yeah. want to go with? Okay, go ahead. Spin your web, story master. <laughs> Um, and then, so, she escapes the aliens and becomes a bounty hunter. Okay. But then she falls in love with an alien um, okay. who she's supposed to capture, and they have a fun time together. Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, so the first two that occurred to me is Beam Me Up Lover yeah. and Booty Bounty 2099. <laughs> Booty Bounty 2099, is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. Is it set in the year... <laughs> could it be? Could it be set in the year 2099? It could be, yeah. 77 yeah. years from now, are you sure? <laughs> hey, Griffin, you can't assume that aliens use the same calendar we do. Yeah, that's fair. That's, that's Oh, totally... that's so weird. We're actually on the same month, 77 years different. Um, it's also January. <laughs> Can... What about... Closer Encounters. <laughs> oh, that's good. I like that one. I like it. Or it could be Close Encounters of the Fourth Kind, <laughs> which is... Parentheses, which is... Doing it. Doing it. I love it. What about... Pro- is it regular? <laughs> Wait. What about Probe Me, Gobular? Yeah. <laughs> Is the character's name Globular? It is important to ask. Get your hands on me, you bitch. <laughs> is he a big g- gelatinous sphere that you can climb inside and be yeah. sort of yeah. How about- transported into a hey. dimension of ex? Let me finish! Area 69. <laughs> And here's the thing, I know I just said it. There's no way that's not taken. No. That's yeah, it's so definitely. Nice. What about no, seriously, welcome to Earth. Welcome to Earth. What about Cocoon 2? <laughs> that I actually they, I think they, it's already they, a movie. Yes, I think yeah, they made, they made, a, made a, a second one. Cocoon 3. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was, uh, one of those has gotta help, right? Yeah. <laughs> what about Uranus, Kalma? Am I right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Also, if you use any of those, TM, 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 TM. Hello. Hi, I'm Aaron. Um, <laughs> Hi, Aaron. My question is immediately actionable. Uh, yeah, please, please. So before the show, I was playing with my fidget because I got ADHD, so I got it. You dropped it on your baby? Um, and I did... <laughs> I have dropped it on my face before. Okay. Um, I dropped it. It is an orb. It is a crystal orb, and it rolled forward, and I thought I'd never see it again, but I figured I'd toss out into the audience. Who's got the orb? <laughs> Who's got the orb? Who's got the orb? Jesus Christ. The orb made it so far. Aaron, the orb went Wait, so Aaron, I where were you sitting? In the back. Aaron, where were you sitting? The very back. The I very, very back. back? That little orb, it was like the whole okay, forest wait, 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 wait. I have to know. Beach ball stuff. Just raise like, no. your hand if something bumped your foot during the show. Now hold on. Now hold on. I have so many questions. The voyage of the you, orb. Can you Incredible approach the journey. microphone, please? I need to know the story of the person who uh, orb rolled up to your feet and you were like, hmm, free orb. Uh. No, but wouldn't this be wild if it's a different orb? I would no, that's not, not mine. That's a different orb. Is that the correct orb? It is the correct orb. It's the right orb. We got yes. the orb back in Aaron's hand. Hey, everybody. big cheer. You love to see it. I love it. We need to do more of those. By the way, we've never done lost and found audience questions. It's I love really it. great. It's so, you know what I like? No jokes required. Yeah. yeah. And it does something good. Okay. Next Hello. Up. Approach the microphone. Welcome. Welcome. Hi. Um, my name is Kaylee. Hi, Kaylee. Hi, Kaylee. <laughs> um, 
Me and my fiance are getting married next year, and he's pretty insistent that we cut our wedding cake with a sword. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> you only, okay. And I keep trying to tell him no. Why? <laughs> yeah, I agree. Agree. What? No, I. Kaylee needs our support right now. Okay. It seems great. <laughs> here's a here's a here's the problem, right? No, it, was that the rest of the question? Sorry, Kaylee. Oh yeah. How how do I tell him no and yeah. actually listen? <laughs> I you cut. Think about it, folks. You cut the cake with the sword once. Great. But you gotta cut a lot of slices of cake. Sure. <laughs> And eventually you're just sitting there with a sword like a doofus cutting small slices with a sword and you look ridiculous. I will say, at mine and Rachel's wedding, it was like 20 degrees outside and we (laughs) could not get through our cake. And had I known in the moment that having a fucking Hattori Hanzo (laughs) steal was an option, I would have taken it. Now, I'm, I'm getting, this isn't funny, but have a groom's cake that your groom can cut can with a sword. Up, like a You're going to want to have two? Like you do at a, a one-year-old's birthday yeah. party, you know? <laughs> yeah. Th- this one's just for him, everybody. Let him have his fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, one cool thing that you could do is say absolutely, and then when he rears back and he's like swings forward... You pull out a short sword, block him. Hell oh yeah! No, yes. yeah, wait. Okay. Go I right am immortal. I have inside me blood of kings. <laughs> and then, long eye contact, not today. And yeah. then it's, that's first dance I don't right know there, what, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happens after that. Maybe I'll sword fight or get hurt or then something. throw sand in his eyes. <laughs> yeah, that's good. No, no. Icing sugar. <laughs> Icing sugar. And then you grappling hook onto the roof. You, and then you run you away. stab him. You cut his head off. <laughs> Wait, uh, at, his at, a certain, head. at a certain point, your stunt doubles have taken over. It's fine. Yeah, 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 you're not doing it anymore. This is all CG. Does, yeah, your, right. Does your fiance... Do you have the budget to motion capture your... <laughs> Does your fiance know how to use a sword? Not yet, no. Okay, so let me okay. tell you. It's not as easy as I make it look in the movies. <laughs> I'm just saying... That and I know what you're... Th- are you here, fiance? Yeah, okay. I know you're thinking big knife. It's different. Now listen, it's not gonna be. Listen, no, no, no. Now here we see Queen Elizabeth cutting a cake with a saber. I believe the wrong way. Yeah, the wrong. <laughs> yeah, hey guys, actually, hey guys. It actually looks like she's pointing to a part of the cake with the right about here. Right about can here. we not? Can we not? Um, actually, the Queen of England cutting a cake with a sword. I bet she probably knows what she's doing, right? Do not, <laughs> now, Justin, I'm sorry. But nothing about the queen's face here is, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Step back, idiots. Look at the guy in the pink striped tie in the background. It's never like, can you believe this? Can I say, okay, real quick about this guy. The queen of England is cutting a cake with a sword? Fucking Santa Bic, go check that shit out, man. How are you sitting there like, oh, this happens to me constantly? No. <laughs> okay, that guy is... So thrilled beyond that person has been bigged from a 12-year-old child okay. to that okay. age. Okay. Anyway, so please. sorry, Kaylee, but Kaylee. I do need to ask, do you think Queen Elizabeth has eaten Taco Bell before? <laughs> probably not, right? No. No, probably not. <laughs> what do you think she'd go with? Oh, if she did? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the crunch wrap supreme. For yeah. sure. <laughs> Can I tell you? <laughs> no Royalty. joke, that was right there in my brain. Right. Okay. Kaylee, thing. has anything we've done today helped? Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Kaylee. Thank you, Kaylee. And good, and congratulations and everything. Congrats. We need to wrap up soon if they're going to get to Olive, Olive Garden. Garden. Yes, yeah. Charles, make it snappy. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Charles. Uh, I'm Charles, he, him. Hi, Charles. Um, how do I get my surgical instructor not to fail me after I made her listen to ska for the entire duration of a seven-hour surgery? Now, oh wait, Charles, here's my question. Sure. Have they expressed to you frustration about this? Uh, like, like, four hours in, they looked at me and were kind of like... Four hours? They made it four fucking hours, huh, well, Charles? It, it, it kind of plays low in the background because they don't want it to be distracting, but like at a particularly long like trumpet solo, they looked at me and were like, this is... 
Interesting. Yeah. Now sure. hold on, Charles. Hold on. You all have. Uh, is has, it possible? Hey, wait, 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 real quick. I need to know. If this is a universal experience. Have you ever played music for like a gathering or a group of people or just one person, and you get to a point in the music where you're like, they're not gonna like this. <laughs> yes, I'm seeing a lot of nodding. Like, oh man, this. This is really grating. I really wish this would sink back into the background. I feel really weird about this now. I want to quit. Can we quit? Uh, Charles. Charles. Someone, while you're performing surgery, saying, well, this is interesting. Is it possible it was not music related at all? <laughs> what were you doing in that moment with your hands? <laughs> uh, I was just standing there holding the retractor uncomfortably yeah. sweating. because I. How uncomfortably? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What's a rich? Wait, wait, wait. Sorry, sorry. Were you skanking it while you were holding the retractor? Because that will, that is no good, my friend. That goes right against that Hippocratic oath. The Hippocratic oath should say, do no harm. And also, when someone is open, don't skank it yeah, don't right skank. next to them. Skanking is generally discouraged. Are you kind of a loose cannon surgeon who likes, yeah. like, ska? Have powers you, you throw and yeah, have, you like, ever, have you ever had to knock on wood? <laughs> <laughs> What's great is you could, uh, you know, the there could be like a, you know, I don't know much about medicine, but like an aorta. <laughs> I know less about Scott. <laughs> yeah, right. But an aorta explodes while you're doing heart surgery, and it's like the pressure is on, and then you can just look at the, like, commanding surgeon officer and just be like, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up! (laughs) (laughs) This man needs mouth to mouth! (laughs) As you trombone into his (laughs) mouth. Trombone in his mouth, yeah. Trombone into my mouth is... (laughs) That's a good name for your book. If you can have an alien (laughs) play trombone. From the creators of Call Me By Your Name. Charles, I've lost the plot. How can we help here? Hey, go to your uh, commanding surgical officer, as Griffin has said. As Griffin has said, yeah. Did you know Oscar Isaac was in a ska band before he became famous? You're going to change the story. Everything, sure. He yeah. was in the Blinking Underdogs. This is true. I'm just a big fan. Their music rules. Yeah, sure. Yeah. What are some of your favorite ska bands, everyone in the room? <laughs> Uh, did the did the did they pull through? Oh yeah, the surgery went great. Great. You can't say oh yeah like it's obvious. From what I understand, With Charles it was behind seven the, hours long. Charles it was behind the retractor. Of course, it went smooth. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Nothing detracted when it wasn't supposed to. Um, did the patient wake up and was like, "What the fuck was that?" Because I loved it. You I'm, have my brain open, and I got that shit without the radiation shielding <laughs> of my skull and skin. And you're not supposed to. I, I will say I, I followed up on them for the past several days and they have seemed pretty chill. Okay. Wait, the patient? Yeah, yeah. Nailed it. Yeah, I mean, you crushed it. Did that happen? Now, you know what it sounds like now? You gotta write a paper about ska, my man. Yeah. The power of ska. Don't, and don't research it anymore. You have all the evidence you, you need. Did it. Trust me. <laughs> Does that help, Charles? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. Um, thank you. This is, I, I don't know. Salt Lake City has, we have, this is our second show here. As my brother, my brother, me. It is so fun every time. Yeah. You all get so rowdy, and I'm so excited I'm to be here. I'm very, very here for it. Thank you yes. very thank much, Salt Lake City. Thank you. And all the usual thank yous. Thank you. A huge thank you to Schmanners. Woo! Uh, uh, thank you to Paul Saborin of Paul and Storm fame. Thank you to the Abravanel Theater for having us. Yeah, this is our second show here, and it's absolutely venue. gorgeous. Uh, thank you to Tyler Reed for the amazing posters. Yes, yes grab yourself a poster, yeah, a poster on your way out if there are still some um, there. Thank Thanks you to, to Rachel yes. for uh, manning the ones and twos over there recording yeah. our audio. And sometimes even the threes. <laughs> that, well, okay. yeah, yeah, I know. It got wild. Uh, Clinton McElroy. You all know him? Yeah, yeah. 
And and Carol McElroy, our stepmom, Carol, is here too to keep sure he to make sure he doesn't wander into traffic. Yeah. So it's always <laughs> nice to have. Um, oh, thanks to Montaigne. Thanks to Montaigne for the use of our theme song, My Life is Better with You. We Thank got you to Mac- Oh, sorry. Listen, we're, it's, if we don't get them out of here in the next minute, they're going to oh, yeah. knock it to Olive Griff, Garden. So they, real, they're going to do it, yeah. So Griff, just real quick, just a quick, real quick impression of Grandpa Dan ordering a naked chicken chalupa at Taco Bell. Easy. Okay. Can I have a naked chomping chicky chubo? <laughs> This has been my brother, my brother. May kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.